Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt. And today we're brewing a Hefeweizen. Uh, we're also gonna be live streaming this brew day on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, we're also doing a uh, kind of a partner stream, uh, dual stream with Party Time Brews. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun. Check out the description for the stream archive if you missed it. But anyway, guys, we're gonna go into the Beer Smith 3 recipe notes first, and then we're gonna jump right into the brew day. Now to go over the Hefeweizen in Beersmith 3. This batch size is 4.2 gallons. Traditionally the malt bill is half and half wheat and pale malt, so that's what we're doing with this batch. We're also using Tetanang, a very small amount of hops, 14 IBUs is all we're shooting for with this batch. Um, so we're just doing a 90 or 0.9 ounce addition of Tetanang. Stefan yeast is actually intended for Hefeweizens, so uh, it's a good yeast to use for this, and I've never used it. It's supposed to impart clove and banana, um, so that's what we're shooting for for the style. For the starter information, uh, it says it only needs 150 billion cells, but since we're using Imperial, it has 200 billion cells, so there's no need for a starter here. For the water chemistry, uh, it's heavy on the chloride, so sulfates around 3 to 1. Next, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the brew day. We first measured out our strike water and we started adjusting our water chemistry. We added five milliliters of lactic acid, 3.1 grams of Epsom salt, 3.1 grams of calcium chloride, three grams of canning salt, 1.3 grams of baking soda, and 0.5 grams of calcium carbonate. Next, we milled our grains. We went ahead and double crushed. After we crushed our grains, we mashed in. We then stirred up the grains to break up any dough balls. After a 45 minute mash and a 10 minute mash out, we raised the grain basket up and pressed on the grains to get as much wort out as we can. We took a pre-boil gravity reading and it measured out four points under target. Once we got to a boil, we added 0.9 ounces of tetanine. After a 60 minute boil, we ran the boiling wort through the pump's line and chiller to sanitize the cooling equipment. After the equipment is sanitized, we turn on the cold water to the plate chiller. We started rapidly chilling the wort. Once the wort is racked over to the fermenter, we added Stefan from Imperial Yeast. Our original gravity measured out to around 1045, which was four points under target. After two weeks in the fermenter, we purged our keg with CO2 and started moving the beer over to the keg. Our final gravity measured out to around 1011, so our ABV measures out to around 4.5%. All right, so we're here at the end of the video where I talk about the brew day and then go over tasting notes on the Hefeweizen. Uh, so the first thing I wanna talk about is we did a live brew day with Party Time Brewing. It was a lot of fun. We, uh, the initial plan was for both of us to stream on our own channels at the same time, like a dual stream kind of thing. Uh, that didn't work out though. My little tablet that I run the stream on just could not handle it. So we ended up mo moving over to his stream so I will post the party time live brew day in the description below. So make sure to check that out if you haven't already. It was a lot of fun and I definitely wanna do that again with him or uh, really maybe a few other YouTubers. So uh, if you're interested in doing a live brew day and uh, just let me know in the comment section below, we can maybe plan something. As far as efficiencies go, I believe I was just four points under my target, which I didn't really track all that much considering I was live streaming. Uh, but I was four points under my pre-boil gravity, which meant I was also four points under my target 
OG, but four points really isn't that bad. I would have typically maybe added just a little bit of DME uh, for that, but I'm not worried about it since it's only four points. Things I did differently for this beer, I only really did one and I just didn't aerate the beer. Uh, my understanding with the Stefan strain and really a lot of Hefeweizen strains is that you want to stress the yeast out to bring out the clove and banana notes. So that's what I did. I didn't aerate really at all. I just moved it over to the fermenter and pitched it and went and it went on its way. I know some people also do open fermentations to stress the yeast out and they'll under pitch. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that. All I did dif differently was I just didn't aerate. And this actually has a lot of banana uh, clove notes. So I think it did the trick. Next, I wanna go to appearance, aroma, mouthfeel, and flavor. The first thing I want to talk about is appearance and appearance it definitely has a straw gold color. I don't know if you can tell, but it has a straw gold color. It is definitely hazy and it has a white head um, that lingers quite a while. Um, the one thing about the haze on this beer is that it actually cleared up a, like a lot. Um, it got to a point where you could like read right through it, um, but I actually moved the keg around today, which naturally kicked probably a lot of the yeast or uh, the sediment on the bottom of the keg back in suspension. So it looks more like a proper Hefeweizen now with the haze, uh, but it's still, it, it's still, if you leave it alone for a while, it, a lot of that will cold crash out. Next, we can go into aroma. So you definitely, you know, per the style, you definitely pick up on the clove phenols and the banana esters. And that's really just from the yeast you use and the, and the way to stress out the yeast. That's a very characteristic of this style. It definitely is heavier on the banana though. Um, the clove is very subtle. Banana is very strong on this. It actually has almost like a faint bubble gummy smell. Uh, and when I mentioned that to my wife, she th kind of thought I was crazy, but I can definitely pick up on a slight bubble gum now. And I was looking into it and I guess that's pretty common for these styles. Uh, that just means it definitely leans towards the banana and the clove. I would say for hop aromas, it's pretty much none. I don't really pick up really any hop aromas on this. Uh, and it definitely has a slight vanilla note as well. Next, we can go into mouthfeel. So naturally, this has a really great mouthfeel, uh, medium to full mouthfeel. Uh, it def it's very soft and billowy. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the amount of wheat that's in this. Uh, so naturally, it's gonna have a more rounded mouthfeel to it. It's just a really refreshing uh, and uh, great mouthfeel. Lastly, we can go into flavor. So naturally, uh, just like the aroma, uh, clove and banana are present, but it definitely leans towards the banana on the flavor as well. And it does have a slight vanilla note, just like it did in the aroma. It also does have a grainy sweetness as well. And for hot flavor and bitterness, there isn't really, I don't perceive really any hop flavor or bitterness on this, which I guess isn't, isn't too weird considering the uh, the amount of hops I used for this. I want to say that this was under 20 IBU um, and the only maybe hop flavor is maybe almost like an earthy note, um, but it's really, the, st the style really isn't here for the hops. Uh, what's on stage for this is the yeast, uh, the phenols and the esters that you're going to get from the, uh, the yeast strain. But anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. I had a blast brewing this. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content like this. I have more grain to glass videos in the works right now. Anyway guys, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.